Welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I'm Caruana with Microsoft Teams Engineering. And we're going to talk today about getting more visibility into changes that are going to happen in your tenant when features are coming, and when we send you important pieces of information through what we call the message center. We have a fantastic new way of integrating the message center with Microsoft Teams using Planner, and I am a huge fan. So let me show you how easy this is to set up. Before you get started, it is important to know that to initiate this sync between Message Center and Planner, which you're going to show in Teams, you do need to have access to the Message Center, which is in the admin experience in Microsoft 365. So if you don't have access to that, then you should speak with your IT folks and show them this handy video and how easy it is to do this. Because once this sync happens, uh, your IT department can share this information with all the other folks that need to understand it, uh, even though they don't need access to the admin center of the tenant. So let's go ahead and hop in and I'll show you how simple this is to set up. We know that there are challenges when managing change from a technical perspective in Microsoft 365. These are just a few of them, but the lack of visibility into triage and your overall progress, how you're going to hold people accountable, there's an operational cost to track changes and manage manual solutions if you're going to copy the content from Message Center to someone else. And how do you collaborate with non-administrators, people who don't have access to the Message Center uh, that need this information, like champions? And lastly, making sure that you don't want to spend your time managing Message Center content instead of actually managing change to the services. So we've heard your feedback, and so we, we really wanted to do something that would enable Enable us to share with you uh, best practices and empower that in a simple way. You want to establish change processes and agree on who's really handling the change in the service. You want regular triages. We recommend at least once a week. You want to make sure that the right owner is assigned to the task and a handoff to the next owner is done well. And you want workflow management in the tool to track and avoid moving content all over into different places. Okay, here I am in the admin center. So this, if you haven't been here before, uh, this is admin.microsoft.com. Once you're here, you're going to say show more and you're going to get this long list of items that are over here on the left-hand side. And what we're focused on right now, what we call the message center. Now, again, the message center is where we share uh, important information with you about changes to the service. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You can see that once I'm here in Message Center, there's a lot of information that's available to me, and this has improved over time. Uh, it's very important to know what's coming uh, to the experience, especially if you're driving adoption, you want to know what's going to happen next. Uh, you can filter this information. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. And you can filter this information by which service. So maybe I am interested in what's going to come in Microsoft Teams. And then I can also filter it by the tag. Is it a major update, a major new feature that's coming? Uh, is it a, just a brand new feature altogether or an update to an existing one? I'm going to go ahead and filter this information on major update. And this is really going to give me some information about what's coming now. Uh, for instance, a new meeting option for managing large Teams meetings uh, in Outlook for Windows. This is great. And it always highlights the services uh, that are impacted by the change. Right here, you're going to be able to see that there's this option. This is the option for syncing in Planner right here. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to get some information over here on the right. Right? It's allowing us to choose which products and categories to sync. It's allowing us to sync messages and it's allowing us to then uh, assign people to those tasks once it's in planner. I want to go ahead down here at the bottom and I'm going to click on set up syncing. It's important to be mindful of the settings that you make here the first time you do this because there's several settings that you can only set up uh, the first time you do it. If you already have a plan that you use to track changes in your services, you can certainly sync with it. If I click here, this dropdown is going to suggest plans to me that exist in my tenant, but I would like to create a new plan. So instead of doing that, I'm going to click right above and say, create a new plan. It's going to go ahead and take me into planner and I'm going to have the ability here to create a new plan. Uh, and so I am going to click here. 
and say center posts. This is going to be private, the plan that I am creating. And I am going to add this to an existing Microsoft 365 group. I want this to go into my deployment team. I already have this team. This is where IT and admin folks, uh, as well as adoption leads, uh, talk about what's happening in the service. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'm going to create that plan. So it has created the plan. You can see we've got message center posts here. And now I can pop back over into the admin center and I can go ahead and search for that plan and boom, here it is right away, message center posts. So I'm gonna select that. And then I'm going to uh, simply use an existing bucket uh, for all of these items to go into because I'm gonna change the buckets later and I'll show you that. So for right now, we can just say use an existing bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and say next. Now I want all the updates. I know some people only want to see the majors, but I'm an adoption specialist and I want to see everything that is going to impact the end user experience. I'll be able to filter and sort it in a moment, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and pick all of the updates. Also, we can include messages that prevent or fix issues, planning for change, and simply staying informed. Now, here's what's really special is I can choose which services I want to select to be included. And so uh, if you know in your organization, for instance, you're not using Microsoft Bookings or Kaizala uh, or other components, you can remove the notifications uh, about those particular services uh, from the data that's going to come through into your plan. All the information will still remain inside of Message Center. This is simply about what information are you going to sync to the new planner that I created. So I'm going to go ahead and say next because I want most of it. Now you can see here that it's telling us that this is the only time that you can import information directly into planner. Uh, this is regarding the information that's already in your admin center. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to this because you only get a chance to do this once. I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to import everything from the past 28 days. I'm a little bit of a data hoarder. I like to see what's in there. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that import for the past 28 days. So it's going to take everything that's in my current message center for the services that I selected and import it into my planner when I click next. It gives me an opportunity to review everything. I have edit buttons here if I made a mistake. So don't worry if you need to go back and change that, you could. Uh, but before I click finish, I want to view and make sure I've got the right settings. And now I'm going to go ahead and click finish. Here now you can choose the frequency of how often you are going to sync uh, from Message Center to your planner. Uh, most folks do it every day. Obviously, you don't have to do it that often. If you don't want to, you can do it once every five days. Uh, I like to have the information in there and then decide how often I'm going to triage the information. And we'll get to that in a moment. But so for right now, I'm going to leave it at every day. And I'd like it to actually do it uh, in in the morning, early in the morning, uh, so that it's basically at off hours uh, from when I'm usually uh, working. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this tomorrow because I can only that's I can only do it for the days that I have that available. And I'm going to pick a time early in the morning, like 2 a.m. That way it's not in the way of any of the other processes I have going. And it's going to create a flow with Power Automate to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and click yes so that it will take care and create that. The first time you do this, you have to make sure to hit continue. You're consenting to use the flow service. Uh, and uh, we have to hit a plus here because I need to sign in to the message center itself via the admin panel uh, to make sure that I have the right rights for this sync to go properly. Uh, you'll notice here it says this flow uses the following apps and a green check means you're ready to go. Well, I don't have one. So I'm going to click here plus and it's going to take me through the authentication process. It is using my credentials to do that. And now I've got a green check mark here and I know that I'm ready to go and create that flow. So I'm going to click create flow. There we go. We're all done. It's going to go ahead and sync new information for me on a daily basis. Here I am in Teams. I'm here in my deployment team, and this is where I do planning around the services that are available. Now, I know that I have that planner that's out there, but I'm not seeing it right now. I'm going to come up here, click on my ellipses, and say Add Channel.
And I'm going to type in a name uh, for message center information. Go ahead and add that. It's a standard channel and I'm going to post here so that everyone understands I've made this new channel. Now once the channel is here, I'm going to come up to the plus and I'm going to find the tasks app. Uh, task by Planner and To-Do uh, is now how you pull Planner or To-Do information into Teams. I'm going to select use an existing plan from the team and boom, there it is, Message Center Posts. If I click Save, it's going to integrate this directly into my Teams channel and I can start to classify the information inside of it. Here are some different ways to think about how you might want to organize the content once it's integrated into Planner and Tasks and Teams. You can organize it by service or workload so that you can say, see all of the Microsoft Teams or all the Exchange items together. You can do it by phases or you can do it by work streams. It all depends on how you manage the work in your organization. But once you have the data inside of Tasks and Teams, there's so many things that you can do with it. Now I'm going to show you one that where I've completed a few more of the features that I like to see. You can tell here that I have updated column names inside of the task application. So we have plan for change, end user adoption, items that are completed and reviewed where there's no action required. I can look at them here in tasks and teams in this board view, or I can switch to a list if that's easier to manage. I'm a visual person, so I like the board. I've also configured the labels here in the task app to match to the visuals of my particular services. And so I can easily assign an item to that so I can visually see what services are going to be impacted by this particular change. And here's the really important part. I've assigned these items to people who care. Brian and myself, why we're going to care about the new pre-join experience because there's some IT work as well as user adoption work that has to happen. Uh, we also have other items over here. The Planner app in Teams is going to be renamed. Hopefully you've all seen that. Uh, that is something that I assigned to myself. So these dates are also come from directly on the card. And if I click in one of the action cards, you'll see that I can change the priority. And I always click show on card. I want to see the header of this particular item uh, in the card itself without even having to open it. You can configure these tasks and teams to your heart's content, but I try to make it quick and simple so that I can bring it up during the weekly meeting and we can discuss what is our priority for working on next. We're excited to bring this solution to you, and I am personally thrilled about the way that it enables communication between different parts of the organization. Sometimes the people who manage voice don't talk to the people who run Exchange, and neither talk to the people who are required for user adoption. We want all of you to talk together. So by managing change in this way, you can have a weekly meeting where you come together to handle the triage, just like any other product management that you might be doing together. We hope that this helps you accomplish better communication inside your organization and our better communication with you. Thanks for listening. See you soon.